Hi, um, great to see you. So welcome to my class of financial programming and databases. Uh, this is the undergraduate, undergraduate level class. Uh, my name is uh, Wang Zigan. Uh, Wang Zigan. Uh, I graduated from Columbia University with a PhD in economics, and I joined HKU in 2015. And this course is designed to be delivered to uh, the year three and four undergrads. Um, so in this course, I will give you some introduction, the basic introduction of the financial programming with Python and how to use Python to, to process the databases, um, mostly in finance area. If you don't know the beta databases, uh, it's fine. That's also a part of our uh, introduction in this course. So let me start. So what we learn and must do in this course, first you will learn uh, programming basics using Python. So we probably will spend uh, half of a semester to learn the basics of this software or programming language. Um, as I understand, some of you already have some basics, basic knowledge but others don't. Uh, don't worry about it. Even you never touched any programming language at the end of this semester, I do, um, according to my past experience of teaching this course, you will have no problem of writing uh, basic data processing programs. Also, a lot of data can be obtained from academic literature reading. So I will also require you uh, to do some projects uh, to collect the data sources from academic literature. If you don't understand how to uh, how to connect, how to read the academic literature, um, no worries. Uh, it's very easy. So I'll, I'll tell you the tricks. You will also find the sources and collect the data, and also use the software, the Python, to process data. Python is not the only software or programming language to process data. You can also use R. You can also use some people use SARS or or MATLAB. Uh, but in this course, I think Python is very promising and uh, and very, I think it's uh, one of the most popular programming languages in the world and it has a lot of uh, bright future. Uh, so, and also it's at the core position of the AI, uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning. So I think learning Python will be very beneficial to you, all of you guys. Also, um, you are required to read various sources of background information uh, beyond my slides. Um, if you just rely on my slides, this is not enough. My slide is, uh, is kind of like a collection of, the, of, of some must-know knowledge, but I will also give you the, the, the documentation of the programming languages and the databases, so you must um, read a lot of things beyond these slides. So this is a typical Python code. If you can understand most of the code, um, that's good. But even you think you can understand most of it, uh, I'm pretty sure you, 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 can, you can still learn a lot of things from this course. Um, so you can see like the, from the fourth line, uh, well, the fourth line with, with a blank line in the, in the, in the second line, uh, the fourth line four is a for loop, and um, uh, later you can see the try except uh, exception handling, and you can see the um, um, you, you write the organize the data, the process the data to a CSV file. Um, if you can, uh, if you can understand all of this, I assume that you have some basic knowledge of uh, this programming language. But if you have no idea what this code is talking about, this is also fine. You will uh, be able to read it after maybe four to five weeks. Well, this is another code. Uh, this code is a bit uh, more advanced than the last one. Um, this is about the data merger uh, using Pandas. Okay, Pandas is a package of Python. I will, I will, I will explain what, uh, what the package is in the, in the later teaching. Also, uh, after the, the processing of data, we need to do the, the data analysis. So the data analysis will mostly be introduced in another course, uh, econometrics or statistics. So this one is, um, I think it's an OLS regression. 
I think it is uh, OLS regression. If you don't understand R square or what this table is talking about, this table actually lists the four regressions, uh, the the estimates of the coefficients in four regressions. Uh, you should read it vertically, not uh, so so vertically. Uh, every every column is a uh, is a regression, and uh, for example, log nih found md that is dependent variable, and all of the variables listed in the first column, I mean, uh, on the left-hand side of the first column, uh, they are the independent variables. Or the also they probably, I'll read it from the notes, but it probably also controls for the fix, some fixed effects. So all of this will be comprehensively introduced and explained in the course of econometrics, but I will also give you some uh, intuitive uh, explanation of the, the tables. So even you don't understand fully the before you understand fully the the mechanism of why and how OLS or other form of forms of regressions are executed, you can understand what the table is talking about. Okay, this is also covered in this course. Um, <clears throat> so this is um, some simple regression, a simple model that you see this is a Cobb Douglas, the, the equation 9 is Cobb Douglas function and how to turn it into a regression model. Um, if we, if time permits, uh, we will cover it, but it should be covered in the microeconomics class. So the purpose of my course is to prepare you for the future data analysis or textual analysis and other machine learning courses. I will tell you the, 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 how, to collect, how to collect the data from the academic literature, how to find the data sources, how to collect the data, how to process the data with the programming language. So I will tell you the basics of programming language and how to use the programming language and other softwares such as Stata or, or R or, or other programming languages to, to uh, analyze the data and generate some readable uh, tables such as in table two, that I just explained a little bit. <clears throat> and that is the purpose of this course. Um, this is Prospectors. I think it is uh, covered, due to my past experience, some courses, it should be, it should be uh, covered in, the, in our accounting class and uh, corporate finance class. So this is some um, Prospectors, uh, it's a, uh, it's uh, it's a very thick book of all the financial information and other related information of a of a company that is going to be public uh, publicly listed is uh, uh, before uh, during the IPO process. So um, you probably will be required to read the prospectus and other financial statements, including the balance sheets, uh, cash flow statements to collect the data sources. Of course, you will not collect it by hand. You will collect the data sources by the program that you write. Uh, the, uh, 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 scripting, web scripting program. Okay, that will be covered in the later part of this course. This is a typical uh, data. Well, this is listed in Stata. Okay, you can see various columns. Uh, the first column is status. You can see withdrawn, completed, Although they're in textual form, form, you can convert it into a into a numerical form to to analyze it. So this is uh, a data of mergers and acquisitions of U.S. banks. Okay, this data is obtained from the Thomson Reuters SDC. Uh, if you never heard of this database, it's fine. It's fine. Um, most of first year PhD students before they are doing the PhD, they never heard of it. So I, um, a big difference between top universities, top research institutions and um, mediocre ones are not um, something that you really think. You, you really think. Um, it's mainly about how comprehensive the university has, the, the university's database. For example, HKU spent a lot of money subscribing um, a lot of very useful databases, but unfortunately, 
in our courses, in our regular uh, academic schedule, calendar, or, or arrangements, uh, most undergraduates do not have classes to utilize these uh, databases. So, for example, uh, HKU spent a lot of money subscribing JSTOR. Uh, is a collection of all the academic literature um, of uh, around the world, and also it has uh, subscribed, uh, for example, Thomson Reuters, Thomson Reuters SDC. It's available in the main library. Um, if I remember right, it's number eighty-two computer. So it's a terminal. You can go there and download all of the data. Not all of the data. Uh, you can download the data that you need. Okay, because all of the data would be very very huge. You can. You, it's impossible for you to download all of them from uh, from the company, but um, other re uh, universities without um, so much money or or, or resources, um, they 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 cannot they, they do not have the access to these databases. So their students um, do not have your opportunity to utilize this data. So I encourage you to explore. Uh, different databases and resources, digital resources, uh, in our education, HKU libraries, because that's a, that's a big advantage of uh, our university, and um, that's a big advantage for you to be here. If you just you know, I'm not I'm not against the Facebook, but if you just uh, you know swipe the Facebook uh, all the day along, and uh, you just do whatever things that the other the people in the, in the students in the other universities. Doing then, then, then you are you are not capturing, you are not utilizing a lot of advantages of uh, this university. Anyway, <clears throat> my point is, our university has a lot of data resources. So if you never heard of them, which is very normal as an undergraduate, uh, undergraduate, um, I in this course I will introduce you uh, and uh, to tell you that these resources. For example, WRDS, CompuStat, they are they are they are different databases or or provider data provider data pro providing platforms. I tell you that they exist, and th this is where you can get them, so you can explore them. Okay, um, this is a typical um, um, uh, data how how the data looks like for you uh, for you to construct different variables and for you to analyze. So what we will learn and uh, must do in this course. So you will learn databases and background information. For example, um, you will also learn some um, detailed information of each databases. For the each database, for example, if you have never heard of QSIP or GBKey, uh, they are identifiers of the of the firms. Um, you will learn how to. Let me silent my phone uh, a bit. Um, you will learn uh, what they mean. For example, QSIP has uh, six digit, and eight digit, and nine digit QSIPs. How to convert, uh, how to convert one to another, and uh, how to understand the meaning of the GV key. So this will be covered in this course. Also, you will be uh, introduced to uh, a lot of databases. For example, Thomas Reuters SDC. That's a database. That's a data. Uh, that in the in the last slide. Also, CompuStat. It's a, it's a collection of the data of the uh, corporate financial statements and CRSP. It's a, a historical stock prices data, securities prices data. TAQ TUC TUC is a tick level, uh, very detailed, very huge tick level uh, transactions and quoting data, quotation data of the securities. Board X is a corporate governance. A database uh, you can use it to take a look at and analyze uh, every firm's board uh, uh, structure in the past for example who's uh, see who, who's in the board in this company and how the board structure changes over time uh, XUCOM is similar to XUCOM is similar to board X it's, uh, it's a competitor okay USPTO is a patent a citation database you can find out all of you know as you know if you if you learn economics before you understand that uh, uh, according to the solo sweat model um, technology grows is um, one and probably the most important 
driving force of the economic growth in the long run. So how do you, how do you measure the technology growth, patents and innovations? So you to to analyze it, you need to analyze analyze the the how how do we you need to analyze uh, the inventors and their innovations. So you need to use the data to analyze under what policy and what circumstances these innovations will be um, will be motivated. So you need to have the innovation data. USPTO has a US innovation data. Of course, I will introduce you to the European and Chinese innovation data for future research. Uh, EDGAR. EDGAR is um, US SEC database. And um, it has all of the financial statements of the corporations, listed corporations uh, in the US. So on and so forth. They, they are just um, a little bit part of the things that we will cover in this course. Of course, I have to admit, every semester, I have a lot of things that I want to cover, but eventually I fail to cover because of limited time. Um, so that's why I also want to uh, record this video, even though I will be unable to cover all of them during the class time, I will record the video, I have uploaded um, and uh, make it public. So if you want to learn more things, you can uh, follow my uh, account and, um, and learn um, um, the things if you, uh, if you are interested. I hope they can be beneficial. Moreover, um, I plan to record a Chinese Mandarin version of this. Um, I, I don't have a schedule for this, but uh, I hope I can uh, have some time to, to, to make it. And who should drop this course? This is something I really love to talk about. <clears throat> People know that I have a reputation at this university to be generous in uh, giving grades because I think like, you know, if you are at the margin between B minus and B, I will give you a B. At the margin between B or B plus, I will give you a B plus. But if you expect an easy high grade from this course, you are very, very wrong because this is a coding course and it's not very subjective, it's very objective. If you cannot write a code that can be executed, you can't get a good grade. And also, um, you know, you, this class has many people and it's impossible for me to execute every code. So my TA will help me uh, execute every one of your codes and I will rely on his judgment whether this code can be executed. So if you are not unable to write satisfactory codes to process the data, um, no, you, you will not get a good grade. Uh, but I'm not saying that getting a high grade is impossible. I'm saying if you, if you, if you input a lot of time and, and work and effort, it's relatively easy. But you don't think that you just sit in the class or watch this video without any practice or or just to spend a little bit of time practicing, you will get an easy high grade. That is impossible. This, I also teach corporate finance. So um, some of you probably have taken my course before, corporate finance class before. It's very, very different from corporate finance. Um, if I teach for, if, if you watch this video for one hour, I expect that at least you will practice for 10 hours. So you need a lot of time practicing because you will find a lot of bugs when you first write programs. In correcting your bugs, you are improving yourself. And in the future, your bugs will be fewer and fewer and you are improved. Um, If you expect easy and light workload, uh, you are also wrong. If you don't have a lot of time, um, you should drop this course. This course is kind of like, how do I say it? It's kind of like mathematics. You see the teacher 
Uh, remember that when, when you were in high school, you see the teacher solving some mathematical problems. You find like, okay, this is straightforward. You see me uh, writing some codes. You see, okay, you write the code and it's executed. It looks very easy. But when you write it, trust me, I have a lot of experience uh, teaching in the past as masters. Even you write the same codes without looking at my codes, you will make a lot of mistakes and troubles and, and type and, and uh, not typos, uh, the bugs. And you will find like, why are you doing this so easily? It seems sort of very easy, but I just spent like two days and I still can't figure it out. It's very normal. Okay, this is some um, frustration that you must experience unless you are a genius. You know, I, I am not a genius. So uh, when I first learned this, I encountered a lot of problems. But now I feel much, much more confident after maybe like 10, 15 years. Um, so if this is your first time writing a program, um, it's going to be very, very normal for you to experience a lot of frustration. But do not be frustrated because once you get over this, this master, you will find that it's going to be very easy for you to, to, to master, to be familiar with the programming languages, this programming language, and all the other programming languages. Because most of the programming languages are very, very similar. Okay? It, the, the ideas are similar. It's just like the grammars and uh, some other things are different. But the, the ideas are similar. <clears throat> so if you are neither a workaholic nor a genius, you should drop this course. You know, some people just uh, you know, look at something that they can do it. You know, I know that they exist. Uh, but I do not see many people. You know, I have a lot of friends. I, I graduated from Columbia. I also have a lot of friends at Harvard, MIT. Like, even though you, you think they are geniuses, they still spend a lot of time and efforts practicing. Uh, I believe that even you are a genius, you should put some effort. So if you expect an A grade, with less than 15 hours work per week. I hope, I, I advise you to drop this course, sincerely, okay? Um, will you fail this course? Mm. I am a kind person. Normally, I do not fail people because I believe I can motivate people to practice and on most occasions I succeeded and most of my past students they spend a lot of time they 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 achieved the goals that is set for them but I did fail people okay some people due to many reasons usually they say they have family reasons or they have health reasons, uh, problems, but I just could not see that they have any health problems. Um, I failed people before for this course, for this course, yes. Because if you, if, if in the assessments, um, I have the problem sets for you to write the codes and you are unable to write any one of them, even the simple ones. I assume that you never spend any efforts. Uh, you know, you, you just need to spend like several hours practicing. It's not very difficult. If you really uh, want to learn data science, you just watch my video or, or attend the class and follow my codes, practice all of the codes in the slides and uh, spend a little bit more time, several hours more um, every week to practice uh, more following the documentation uh, codes. I don't think um, I don't think it's possible that uh, that you cannot finish any problem sets. So this course does not have a final exam, but it has a lot of projects. It has a lot of projects. And I will ask you to present your codes to prevent, to, to, to avoid the situations that some people hide other people to write your codes. Yeah. Do not try to fool me because I obviously have more experience than you do. So every at the end of the every semester, of uh, the TA and I will have the pre presentation 
session, you should submit all of the codes of the projects. Even though you, you are not able to finish all of the projects, uh, it's fine. For example, I have 10 projects and you finish five. And you only submit the five projects codes, it's fine. Okay. And I ask you these uh, codes, I ask you, okay, explain this, explain that. Why, why do you write this function? If you have no idea why, um, how these codes are written, I will assume that you are cheating. Okay. And that, that, that will result in very se severe, a serious uh, outcome, okay, a consequence. So uh, do not cheat. You know, just practice and be honest. If you can only, well, you can help, you can, you can find others to help you, to, to teach you, to tutor you. You can find the TA or me or other friends to tutor you, but you cannot ask the other people to write your codes. That is not acceptable. That is academic dishonesty. Okay, that is not acceptable. <coughs> so if you just uh, really input your effort and, um, and do the problem sets and the projects and submit something and can correctly answer the questions that I, I will ask you, then you do not need to worry about uh, failing this course. I heard that in this semester you can choose pass fail. Um, if you can do something like you will pass, but, um, but uh, do not cheat. If you cheat, you will fail. If you uh, cannot finish anything, you will fail. Okay. okay. So this is not guaranteed. I know that some people in, in some other classes, they, they guarantee you, but uh, in this course, it's impossible. This is not, uh, let, me, let me emphasize this again. This is not a very easy course, okay? In this practice. So I, I hope that after this course, you are able to um, understand like how this graph is talking about. Okay, so this is data analysis. Uh, you probably will not be able to generate this this figure because uh, that's probably the 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 goal after the uh, the econometrics course. But I hope you can at least understand the, re the the outcome of the data analysis, and I hope you can understand this uh, this regression table that I explained a little bit before. And uh, I hope you can generate, not just understand, but generate this network figure. Okay, this is a, this is a network analysis. Uh, every dot, you see every dot is uh, representing a, a, uh, a person or company in the whole network. And the network could be the friendship or business relationship or lending, borrowing, the bank loan relationship or or some other relationships. So this is a network analysis. I hope that you can use Python or other and other data analysis software to generate this figure. And this is another one. Guess what it is. See, I'll give you several seconds to guess what this is. Okay, this is a US map. This is a US map uh, of the flight networks. Okay, each dot is an airport. Okay. The funny thing is that um, the funny thing is that once I remember I, I don't quite remember it's uh, probably several years ago um, we, we had an international student from the U.S. He could not recognize this map, um, but which is normal, you know. This, this is such a mess, which is normal, which is normal. He he eventually did pretty well in this course. We will. Um, Mainly use Python, okay, in this course. And um, the plan is that I will cover most of the syllabus, but I'm um, not restricted by the syllabus, because uh, data science is developing pretty fast. So I will talk about anything important that I think. Uh, I will add things in the syllabus uh, that is not covered in the syllabus, okay. Uh, I will also have additional reading materials or workload anytime. Uh, I'm not giving you too much work because I know I understand that you have other uh, courses and uh, during this very special time, a lot of management of the courses are, are such a mess, um, which is understandable. It's not that 
not only at our university, it's, uh, it's a global phenomenon. You know, every university, every every, almost most of the professors and students are experiencing this uh, very tough time. So I hope that uh, we can figure out an efficient efficient way to convey the knowledge, and uh, you can understand. Uh, you can you can you can improve yourself after after this master. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Let's uh, get to our. Let's get to our uh, introduction of uh, the programming language.